Well, hello, Stacy. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great. So what's going right today for you? Um, I got up early. I exercised and I get to talk to you. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Back at you. Yeah. Same well. exact thing. <laughs> so today we're here to talk about clutter and you are the one of the most uncluttered people I've ever met. I've been, I've been to your house several times yes. and it's, it's perfect. There's no clutter anywhere. Your countertops have nothing on them and it's very nicely decorated and you have such class and I love visiting your house. And one thing I noticed when I was at your house is that you have a drawer in your refrigerator that's just for cheese. <laughs> Yes, I do. I like cheese <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but it's it's you have lots of cheese. There's there's a ton of cheese. So Different cheeses. And and there's nothing else in the drawer. It's just nope. it's the cheese. It's the cheese drawer. I have a vegetable drawer, a cheese drawer. I mean, because I know there's like a dairy drawer where you put cheese and other things like whatever else you eat in it but it's just cheese and you must have 50 kinds of cheese in there. And I know I, I have a place to go if I crave cheese that it's, it's everyone can come and eat cheese. People, people have commented on that in the past. Have I, had they? A, I had a nanny when the kids were little who said, you love cheese as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be validated because most people make fun of me, but. Oh, but I, it's great. It's, awesome. it's very organized in there too. Everything yeah. in your house is organized. Yeah, that's me. So have you always been organized? Yes. Yes. Even when you were a kid? Um, as a child, I don't, as a teenager, definitely. Like from really? puberty one, I can remember. Yeah. Um, when I take notes in class, for example, I use colored pens. Uh, and eat, I'm taking a yoga course now and I was studying uh, some of the books and I'm, do red for things that are super important, green for comments I'm making. So yeah, I have always just, I think a little bit of it is, it helps me with my anxiety. Like I know where things are and what the importance of them are. So yeah, I've always been like this. Did, Did you learn? learn? Did you learn this? No, or it's just me. My sister, I have one sister and she was a, not similar at all. I almost said she was kind of a pig, which she would agree oh. with. <laughs> she would leave food everywhere, like banana peels under the couch. It was, she was completely opposite of me. My parents were kind of in the middle, but no, I, this is, I think I'm just wired to be very kind of, I don't know. Organized and clutter-free. Yeah. And so you told me a story one time about a dumpster at your house. Oh, Tell me my about birthday that. present. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, over time, houses, you get things like things just pile up. And I tend to, because I don't like clutter, I toss things in the garage. Like if it's in my way, I toss things in the garage. We had redone the bathroom and the, like a 12 foot counter was like in the garage for no reason. And I asked my husband for a dumpster for my birthday and he got me one and I think it was like 150 bucks. It wasn't a big deal, but it was just, it was huge and everything fit in it and you could put anything in it you wanted. You could pile it up as high as you wanted and then they would come and pick it up and take it away. So empty delivered. We filled it with yard waste and we filled it with construction debris and I threw appliances in there. We put a, ki a literal kitchen sink in there, um, toys that like were destroyed and rusted and just we filled the whole thing and then you call them and they take it away. It was the best present I <laughs> ever. <laughs> you had the best birthday ever. It was great. Because the garage was driving me crazy. I couldn't fit my car in there and I didn't even want to go in there because clutter makes me anxious. 
Yeah. How long had it been sitting in your garage? Um, we had been in the house. I don't know. It was like accumulated like over seven, eight years. I see. So it was a lot of stuff. We had done yeah. a lot of remodeling. So it was like old tiles and, but that stuff's hard to get rid of. Like, unless you have a big truck or a trailer and we don't, um, plus you don't want to put d disgusting things in your car. So, yeah, but, that's yeah, true. The dumpster was awesome. So I would highly recommend anyone who's working on getting rid of stuff or is annoyed by all the stuff in their garage and it's mostly trash, get a dumpster. And if their birthday's coming up, it's an for Christmas. Present. It works for Christmas too. Christmas too. Did you we say your birth you said your birthday though, right? I got it for my birthday. We've okay. done it two times since because it was so awesome. And my husband, who is not bothered by clutter, actually did have a really good time too. Just like looking for things and throwing it in there. And it was just and it, it was a nice physical thing to do on a nice day. My goodness, how do you top that gift? <laughs> for me, it was perfect. I mean, really happy for a really long time. <laughs> I may try that one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things don't make you happy. Experiences do. And throwing stuff away makes me happy. Okay. Well, at least you know that about yourself, right? Yeah. So, so what about when you buy clothes? Do you, do you bring things in and, and take things out at the same Not time? I'm not as good about that. Uh, actually, recently, I'm kind of working on that, like, because there's, uh, I'm not going to work like I used to. So I have a closet full of work appropriate clothing that I really wouldn't wear any other time. And you don't need like 15 blouses if you're not going anywhere. Right. Um, so I'm trying to, so I, I, we have six kids. Four of them were girls. So I had in a spare bedroom, I put a bunch of stuff in there and they will come and go shopping in oh. my closet uh, because I don't just want to give them, some of them are really nice and still stylish and wearable. It's just, I'm not going to wear them. So they'll come every once in a while and clear some of it out. Um, I try when I buy something new to get rid of something. Uh, and that's a, that's a recommendation that I think a lot of people know about. That's a little hard for me, even if it's something I haven't worn in a really long time. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, what if I have a ball to go to? It's like a I, ball. <laughs> it's like on ball gowns. No, so, but uh, my closet is also very organized, though. I have my work shirts in one section, my fancy outfits clothes I don't like. I actually have a section for clothes I don't like, which you, that's you do clothes you don't like. Okay. Yeah. It's like stuff to throw on if I'm just going in the yard, like just stuff that is still fine, but I wouldn't want to be seen in it. Okay. Your yard clothes. <laughs> yard clothes. Okay. And is everything sorted by color? No. 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 I have things in my closet sorted by color. It's sorted by preference. Things that I wear a lot to things that I wear not as much yeah. and it's sorted by sportswear so t-shirts yoga clothes and um things like undershirts for skiing are all together work clothes are together um so it's organized by category I guess which is kind of how I file I, I don't I'm not like an alphabetical person oh I'm more, more of a which makes it very hard for other people to to find things because like I know where it is um like in my phone I'll say Denise from yoga and it's, it's that's just who she is <laughs> instead of putting her last name it's just I don't know that's funny because I file alphabetically yeah I, that I, that doesn't surprise most people do that's normal yeah. right yeah. but it's a great way to keep your stuff hidden if you don't want people finding anything out about you, you just file by category and nobody yeah. will ever figure it out. Mostly it's just so that I remember which Denise it is. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of clients and a lot of, you know, I don't want to get it mixed. I've gotten it mixed up before. Like my oh. daughter-in-law has the same name as a ex-client of mine. And I've texted my ex-client before with personal questions oh no <laughs> so I'm like Christina future daughter-in-law no I, I don't have to do that for family but for okay. clients usually I put client after just so that it keeps so what's your opinion on 
storage bins. Like if people want to buy boxes to put their stuff in. So one of the one, so clutter is fine if it makes you happy. Like my daughter has tchotchkes and plants all over her 500 square foot apartment and she can hardly move in there, but she, it just, she feels delighted by it. So in, if clutter doesn't bother you, clutter doesn't bother you. It's not a problem. For most of us though, clutter tends to create some level of anxiety and also sometimes depression. And there's a lot of research about that. Yeah. Uh, the, the connection and the, actually what happens with anxiety is it releases cortisol in your body, which also actually affects your health. So it's not just your mental health, it's your physical health. Mm -hmm. And recent research has also really connected it to weight gain. So people who are trying to lose weight, uh, problematic, right? If you've got stuff everywhere. Um, so if people are putting it in boxes, so does it, does it affect it, them the same way if it's, if it's it, hidden in a box? It depends. So if you're, so that, to me, there's like two kinds of clutter. There's just too much stuff. Like you just have too much stuff around that you don't really need, or you just, your stuff's all over the place. Like your mail is laying on the counter for the last three weeks. Like that's not too much stuff. It's just, you're not putting stuff away. Um, so the question is, if you need to get rid of stuff, bins really are not helpful because that just gives you the illusion of organization. Um, if you do that and put it in the garage, so you don't see it that, and label it, that may work. But we do tend to organize our clutter rather than getting rid of our clutter. Yes. And then that organization tends to eventually dissolve. Like you'll organize a drawer and then a month later, it's back to being a mess. Yes. Um, so a lot of times people will try really, really hard to organize their clutter, but they don't feel better about it because they still have the clutter. Clutter. It's still clutter. It's just in another place. Right. Now, yeah. I mean, we, we used to have bins and we would store it. And then I thought, wait a minute, we're not looking at anything in these. We need to donate it or whatever. And we did, but we do store things like for the holidays. That's normal. Yeah. I mean, and that's we pull it out every year, right? Like yeah. we do that too. Christmas boxes and other seasonal things. Seasonal, like, yes. yeah. Like decorations for fall, Halloween, things like that. I mean, that's just stuff that you don't use more than once a year or once every, whenever. But you don't want to really get rid of bins. Are perfect for that. Yeah. Um, it's not going to help you get your mail off your counter. It's not going to help you get rid of like your child's artwork from when he was five and now he's 40. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do you do with that stuff um, from your, from your kids? Do you keep it or do you take a picture of it and then discard it? I keep, I keep more than I should, okay. uh, but it is in bins and it is labeled. And my hope is one day when they have their own large home, I can give it to them. Uh, when they, they're all moved out now. And when they moved, my son said, it's not my responsibility to take the stuff that you want to keep, which oh, is true because yeah. there were his papers from elementary school and they're not everything, but um, there's some things I just want to have. I never, and I never pull it out and look at it except for when we're moving and I'm deciding whether to take it or not. Oh, that makes but, sense. Yeah. But um, so Yes, I have too much probably of my kids' things in boxes, but our garage has a, a shelf and they're stored way up there and I don't see it. So they're neatly hidden. They're hidden. They're not like on the fridge or in a yeah. box in the house. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter would kill me if she came over and found a drawing she did on my fridge. That's a great idea. Pull it out and Annoyer. put it on there and don't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's a great way to freak her out, I think. It would be. She I would love that me. idea. She, I might do that. I do that. <laughs> uh, but we get into a cycle of clutter causes anxiety, then we're anxious, and then we're too anxious to fix the clutter, and then we have more clutter. And then we're more anxious. So you get it, you kind of go down the rabbit hole, and that's how people end up with 
well, the extreme of that would be a hoarding situation. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Stuff everywhere, and that is not healthy for anyone. Um, and when people have physical clutter, which it weighs on your mind, mm -hmm. but there's also mental clutter. So and if you're adding the physical part of it to the mental clutter you already have, that's right. that could be problematic. Well, there's also research that says that your environment around you is a representation of the environment inside you, which is where that research around depression and anxiety came. If you're a person who's very chaotic inside and very overwhelmed with stuff to do and just running all over the place and you have clutter all around you, there, there's a connection. Um, just like there's a connection with weight gain. It's just, there's too much uh, unhealthy in and then it's unhealthy out. So often clutter is, is a symptom and hoarding is absolutely a symptom of, of like extreme pathological anxiety. Yeah, so, so I was gonna say, when does clutter become an issue? Um, and that would be the issue, but how do you go from having some clutter to where you have hoarding tendencies? In some ways it's a little subjective, whether it's a hoarding situation or just a lot of clutter and overwhelming and you don't know what to do. Uh, if you have trash out around, like on the floor or old food, like around, that usually is a big indicator of this is more than just a cluttery house. This is someone that has probably an anxiety disorder of some kind, if you're not actually putting trash in the trash can. Uh, and trails, people have to make trails to get into the other room or they yeah, can't sleep in their bed because there's too much stuff. Yes, and I actually, I have a friend whose daughter won't sleep in her room because there's too much, her room is too messy, which basically means her bed is piled up with clothes and she doesn't feel like dealing with it. So if you are changing the way that you're living, if you are avoiding an area in your home, if, if you're sleeping on the couch, that, that's obviously problematic. Doesn't necessarily mean you're a hoarder. It just means that you, it's a thing you need to deal with. Yeah. And pe also people, when they stop inviting company over. So clutter is problematic because it's overstimulating. There's too much around you. And so that tends to make it hard to focus on whatever you need to focus. It kind of also tends to remind you of all the stuff you have to do. Like mm -hmm. if you've got a pile of mail on the counter, you've got to go through that at some point. And then that kind of brings up, oh, what else do I have to do? Um, it makes you, it makes you kind of embarrassed or you feel guilty. A lot of people have that have clutter feel really guilty because they just can't get themselves to clean it up and they don't know why. And they're embarrassed to have people over, especially unexpectedly. Like it's mortifying for somebody to drop in unexpectedly and have crap everywhere. Um, and it also makes it hard to like find things like right. keys and um, things that you might need to find really quickly. So in general, if you like a lot of your stuff around, that's fine. If you have piles of stuff that you just haven't dealt with, or haven't put away, that's kind of a sign that you're headed. And yeah. not necessarily pathological area, but you're moving toward less health for yourself. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's overwhelming. People get very overwhelmed um, and they just, it's too big of a task. Like a room that you can't sleep in because there's so much stuff on your bed feels like such an overwhelming task that what we do is we avoid. And then the pile gets bigger and we avoid. And then we're anxious and depressed and avoid it. And then we go to the doctor to get meds when really that's not the answer. How can people help themselves? Is there um, help for this that can sure. stick? Sure. Uh, sure. I mean, there are okay. some ways to approach it that are more likely to be successful. So instead of trying to do something new, Think about doing something differently. Uh, a really common complaint 
and marriages are, are, and this is weird to me, but dishes, dishes pile up. And um, like when I work with couples, dishes pile up, he won't help me. So then I can't cook because there's no counter space. And I think, well, how did you get to the point where there's no counter space at all? So instead- And what what do they say when you ask that? What do they say to that? They don't really have an answer. They just are like, it's just, it's, it's too hard. It's too much. I'm too tired. He should help me. The kids don't help me. A lot of excuses. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want, I want to say something about parenting in, in a second. Yes. So instead of just sticking your dish in the sink, stick it in the dishwasher. Like don't try to come up with some new grand system just think about, okay, well, I do walk my dish from the table to the sink, hopefully. Instead of doing that, just put it in the dishwasher. And that's the only change you do for a while. And will uh, they do it? Do they actually do it? Or is even that overwhelming for people? It can, it can be overwhelming, but if they're really yeah. willing to start, that's a good place to start, is pick one thing just one thing that isn't, and don't pick the thing that's the big, horrible thing that makes you really upset. Pick a drawer that nobody sees that isn't important and set a timer for 15 minutes, sit down and for 15 minutes, work on that drawer. At the end of that time, stop. Next day or whenever, next week, 15 minutes, same drawer and just work on that drawer and nobody could see it. Nobody could see the success or the failure. It's just your like little project. And the more you do that, the more successful you feel and the less negative you, negative thoughts, the fewer negative thoughts you have about it. Cause we get into this cycle of I'm such a loser. My house is a mess. I can't even clean it up. What's wrong with me? And those voices don't encourage us to fix it. They just encourage us to sit down and feel bad. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being just aware of that, that there, there is going to be a voice saying, you know, this wouldn't have happened if you paid attention or whatever it's saying to you. Just kind of shrug your shoulder at it and say, well, I'm going to work on this drawer and uh, do that um, one thing at a time is for chronic clutter. Like if you're just someone who has papers and dishes and things like that are always around that are bothering you, one thing at a time, one, not one room at a time, one thing at a time. So in a bedroom, um, toss all your clothes on the floor and make the bed. You still have a messy room that you have to deal with, but you can at least sleep in there. Yes, that makes sense. Um, Yeah. and. A lot of times, a lot of times parents with children who are very busy with jobs, um, it's interesting. There's a statistic. We have three, I think it's 3.1% of the world's children live in the United States and we consume 40% of all toys produced. So it's pretty safe to say that 99.9% of us who have kids have too many toys in our house. And just being aware of that, and and there's reasons for that. You know, we get we feel guilty. We don't spend enough time, so we're gonna buy them stuff. I can promise you, as a child therapist, buying your kids stuff isn't gonna make them happy or make them a better person. Uh, the other piece of that is parents are very reticent to ask their children to pitch in and do chores, because the reality is, it's a lot easier to just do it yourself than to mm-hmm. get your nine year old to do it. Um, but getting your nine-year-old to do it, once you get that up and running will help. So you have, to, it's kind of like hiring a, an intern, right? You have to train them for six months, but then you have somebody to help you. Right. And think of it, your kid's going to complain, but it is a gift because children that have chores statistically always do better as they grow. Yes. Because they have experience managing their time, prioritizing what they need to do, uh, negotiating with you around how it's going to be done. So many kids don't have any household responsibilities at all. And I'm not saying make your kid vacuum and dust and clean the kitchen every night and one chore, take out the trash, go around and pick up the trash in the waste baskets and put it in the garage trash. Just one 
thing that they have to be in charge of. My son had to empty the dishwasher because it's my least favorite chore. No. <laughs> in the world. That was his. He had to do that and he had to take out the trash. And he complained a lot. But after a while, he just did it. Yeah, it became part of his routine. It just became probably. part of his routine, like yeah. brushing his teeth. He had to do that. He had to get ready for school. He had to go to school. He had to come home and he had to unload the dishwasher. So it just kind of, after that initial, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then the second step of call and do it, call and do it, bug, bug, bug. And that's usually where parents give up. They'll say, oh my God, I have to ask him 15 times. Keep at it because it will help you and it will help them. Most families struggle, working moms especially, struggle with being overwhelmed at home by the things that need to be done. And that's where clutter tends to kind of build up to a point where you're not a hoarder, you don't want it to be that way, but you just feel so overwhelmed and emotionally drained that it's just another thing that you get to feel bad about, about yourself. Yeah, and it gets completely out of control. Yes, it does. Um, and it does make people feel bad about themselves. Yeah. And what do you say about people who don't want to get rid of things because they paid money for it? You know, I spent money on this. I can't get rid of it. Or the other thing is so-and-so gave this to me or I inherited it. I can't get rid of it. So that's, that's interesting because I just uh, worked with a woman who was cleaning out her mother's house. She had passed away and she had all these generational heirlooms and she said, I can't, she was moving. She said, I can't fit these in my new space and I don't really want them out, but there are so many boxes of them. So what she did is she decided to choose two things and got rid of the rest. And she got rid of it by, there are people that will actually come um, especially if it's a situation where you're inheriting some, someone's mm -hmm. passed away or someone's going to a nursing home or retirement community, even if you are moving to a retirement community, there are people, consultants that will come out and they will help you with this because this is getting rid of a lot of stuff that's really meaningful to you. It's yes. Hard. Um, I have a friend who, this is what she does. She's the supervisor of a company that helps people downsize. And she told me a story once that she went in a house and there were 85 pictures of cats, like figurines and artwork on the wall. And she told the woman she could keep two. And what did the woman say to that? She didn't like it, but she did it because it was an expert that she hired to come into her house to do. Usually, when, when it's a situation like that, it's usually like the kids that hired this expert to come in and deal with this. Right. Um, she has, she has chronic quarters that she sees and she says they make, she says they make no progress, but they want her to come and she comes and she's very patient and she works with them. And I think the benefit there is that it makes them feel less awful about it because there's one person that comes in and is kind to them around it because hoarding is actually a disorder and you need therapy for that or you need some help you're not going to just start stop you're not going to stop being a hoarder because right yeah, that's not but for most of us it does it's not that it's attachment to items they say if you haven't worn something in the last year seriously consider getting rid of it yes that is very good advice that I don't Because, <laughs> you know, you never know if you're going to go to a ball. People do that with objects, too. Like, well, what if I need this? One right. Day? And, I, and also, like I said, I, I paid a lot of money for this. How can I get rid of it? I can't because I paid money for it. Think about that is similar to the thinking of the clean plate the clean plate society thing. Yes. A lot of us were taught as children, we had to clean our plate. Oh yes. Cleaning your plate is, it's not a rule at all. And well, it was for, it was for the starving children, right? Yes. Right. Starving That's children. what they would tell you. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and our parents were a generation where, you know, the depression and world war II and all kinds of things, but it's not really relevant now. And I worked with a weight loss program for years and we would try to undo that lesson. Like you don't need to clean your plate. There's no 
there are no starving children that are get the food. It's okay if it goes in the garbage disposal. Uh, at restaurants, we would tell them, take half your meal when the wait, ask for the box and the meal at the same time. Yes. Take half of the meal, put it in the box, stick it under your chair, and then you can clean your plate. Or just dump pepper all over it and then you won't eat it. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a weight loss trick. That. Yeah. But like holding on to something because you paid a lot for it is similar, right? Like it's not, you don't need it. You don't really want it. Okay. Just because you paid for it, it's, it's a similar kind of thinking of, well, I have to clean my plate while I can't throw away something I paid for. That's not a rule. That's true. But some people, I think, think that they're wasting money if, they're, if they get rid of the item that they paid so much for. They've already paid for it. So right. money's already been wasted. It's already been wasted, yeah. What you do now with it is not about history. It's about going forward. Yeah, so, or you give give it to someone else who can make better use of it, right? The buy nothing, sell nothing is great for that because it feels better to give things away than to throw things away. And that is that's a good good place to go if you have a lot of stuff that you still value but you don't need, use that and then at least someone could really benefit from it. And then you get to feel good about that. Yeah, and like a hoarding situation though, people find value in everything. Yeah, you know, you watch the show Hoarders and people, I mean, a piece of paper, somebody finds value in a piece of paper and they, they're freaking out. They can't let it go. Yeah, and so, perfect. so to get help for that, are there, are there any books that people can get? Or is there a special type of therapist? Although a lot of people that are hoarders don't think they're hoarders and they don't, yeah. it's everyone around them that wants them to get help, but they don't really think they need any help. So think of it like addiction. It's like an addiction. Uh, right. People often with addictions don't think they have a problem. Their family thinks they have a problem, but they don't. Right. And they're addicted to stuff. Right. right. So hoarding is an, it's an addict. It, it's, it's not exactly an addiction because there's more to it, but it is an addiction in that they just can't, it's not that they'll just stop doing it because you tell them it's a bad idea to have 15,000 newspapers from the eighties still in your house. So it's a kind of a combination of an addiction that's been created by crippling anxiety. Because a lot of these people that are hoarders also don't leave their home. That's right. part of it. So the place to start would be with working on anxiety. And I don't think if your anxiety is that bad that a book is going to do it. I think you need a professional. And ideally a professional that... Uh, is an expert in anxiety and they they do exist it's kind of hard to find now after the pandemic right mental health is hard to access but there are people that specifically work with anxiety disorders and hoarding would absolutely fit into that so if they go to somebody for an anxiety disorder that could help them start to clear their clutter if they work on the anxiety part okay and that works just even for people that are just overwhelmed by clutter and just feel like I can't handle this. Uh, working on your anxiety is probably the place to start. And if you just have a lot of clutter, you're not a hoarder, but you just have stuff, books may, may help. And I would focus on the anxiety piece because that's where okay. it's coming from. It, it both causes it and is a symptom of it. That's interesting. Which, yeah, which is, it's kind of interesting because OCD, which is kind of the opposite of hoarding, is also an extreme anxiety disorder. Depending yeah. on how you're wired, anxiety will either cause you to be completely anal retentive about your, your environment or throw caution to the wind and keep newspapers from the 80s. So, but both are symptoms of anxiety. You have to know that it's not just laziness. A lot of times we label ourselves as lazy. My desk is a mess because I'm too lazy to clean it up. Right. No, it's not. It's not that. It's a feeling of over it's it's a feeling of being overwhelmed. It's a feeling of stress. It's cortisol in your body which makes you exhausted and anxious at the same time and makes you gain weight. So you have to really kind of be able to connect it to, this isn't me being lazy and ridiculous. This is me not managing my anxiety well. Yeah, so, you have to kind of dig a little deeper. 
now. So once you once you accept, okay, this is this is anxiety related, even though I don't feel like I'm an anxious person, people misunderstand anxiety. People think it means worrying. That's not what it is. I mean, worrying can be part of it, but anxiety happens in the body, mm -hmm. chemical. Um, it's really not about your thoughts as much as it is about your behaviors. It's really not that hard to work on if you recognize that that's what it is. Yeah. Accessing good mental health now is extremely difficult. Um, I know people are very frustrated um, because once you get to the point where you admit to yourself, I need some outside help for this, and then you can't find anybody that's taking new clients, it makes it worse. Yeah. What, what do you do, though, in that situation where you just can't find the help? Where do you go next? Well, you, first of all, don't give up because with, um, with the de decrease in providers, there is now an increase in network um, networks that are kind of being formed to make it easier for people to find a therapist, whether it's in their area or virtual. I personally don't like virtual therapy. It doesn't feel the same to me, but for someone who's never done it before, it may feel a little safer yeah. than actually walking into the room. Um, walking into the room is always better, but if you, people get very anxious about therapy, especially yeah. if for anxiety, which is kind of ironic, but there are, are, we are working hard on bringing new networks out there and getting the word out in how to, how to access people. The problem is there just aren't enough people. Yeah. Um, and the insurance companies are, are making it very easy now to get paneled with them. So you're in network, which for example, Blue Cross Blue Shields uh, mental health panel has been closed to master's level therapists since the sixties. And now it's open, not only open, but they're reaching out to new graduates who aren't even licensed. So they're hmm. really, trying to increase the, the pile of therapists. So just hang in there and don't give up. What about a support group? Are those easy to find? I mean, would you recommend doing a support group if you, for some reason, can't get into yeah, a therapist? I mean, if you have one in your community, Support groups work really well for some people and don't work at all for others. And you don't know that until you go. Okay. Go to it and you feel better and it feels like it made you think about things a little differently. Great. And support groups aren't usually advertised. So you kind of have to look for them. But if you, even if you just Google a specific thing, I know there, for example, there's a health anxiety support group in Seattle that is it's hard to know where, how to get to it, but it, they do exist. And there are support groups for hoarding and clutter too. And one of the things a support group does is it makes you feel like you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're not a giant loser because you're looking at other people. They're not losers. Right. Maybe some of them are, I don't know, but there's a, we, we like to say, you know, the, uh, do unto others as you should want them to do unto you, whatever that is. We, we flip that around and say, do unto yourself as you would do for others. So give yourself a break. Like you would if a friend said, I'm having, I'm struggling. There's crap everywhere and I don't know what to do. You wouldn't get in their face and say, you're a big fat, lazy loser. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. But that's what we say to ourselves. Right. So not nice to ourselves. Self-talk. And that's, that's really where everything kind of starts getting better. And it, that's another thing you may need some help figuring out how to tackle because a lot of the things that positive self-talk, say affirmations in the mirror, sometimes it's just not enough. Right. You're kind of giving it more attention. It's yeah. Better to kind of kind of make friends with that voice in your head that's telling you all those things, roll your eyes at it and say, whatever, dude, and then move forward. And yeah, take some practice. Yeah, great advice, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you for visiting today. Anytime. It's great seeing you. Too. Hopefully, we can get together soon yes. for coffee. Coffee. Well, thank you so much. I can have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.